Welcome to the Como Sports End Zone Podcast with Como Sports Director Nico Tamurian and Najee Moye. Welcome to the Como Sports End Zone. I'm Nico Tamuri, and this is a what they call in the podcast world an emergency edition. We're going to call it Rapid Reaction because, my goodness, what we saw from the Seahawks Sunday was spectacular. A 20-17 to win over the San Francisco 49ers. And here's the thing with that. Okay, the Niners, it's not like they're the Kansas City Chiefs or Buffalo Bills this year with undefeated or just a couple losses on the season they now have the same record as the seahawks at five and five so why is this, why does this matter so much i think that's why people are so excited today you have to peel back the layers of this thing for starters you have to look at the idea that first of all the seahawks hadn't beaten san francisco since 2021 that is six straight losses three in 2022 if you count the playoff game two during the 2023 season and then this year they lost to the niners at lumen field back in october Yeah, they go on the road, arguably, you know, a more difficult scenario, and they find a way to win. And I think that speaks volumes of this team. And I think that's why so many people are excited about this, because when you look at things, okay, you had a Seahawks team that had lost five of their last six games. People were just simply not excited anymore. They were wondering what's going on. That You even think about news we had this week with center Connor Williams retiring, and it had fans thinking, like, what's going on with this team? So the response is what's key here, okay? You have you have a team that not only had lost that stretch of games, five of the last six, lost two in a row, and losing those games to Buffalo and the LA Rams really in games where it was self-inflicted and costly mistakes, right? That's what was really the difference in those games. So to bounce back in that way, go on the road to San Francisco, a place you hadn't won, again, in three years, and to win the way you did, okay? The way you did was finding a way to rally in the fourth quarter. So San Francisco takes that 17-13 lead, and then here comes the Seahawks. Here's this movie script we've seen as recently as two weeks ago. Third and one for the Seahawks. They go for it on the run. They don't get it. Now, I would argue, if you look back at that film, Geno Smith had the first down. It was just a really poor spot from the officials. But neither here nor there because it ultimately didn't matter. Fourth down happens. Zach Charbonnet is stopped short. And so... At that moment, why I think that moment is, I I said a minute ago it didn't matter in the ultimate outcome of the game, but why it does matter is in what makes this win so special. We can talk about the history, we can talk about all that stuff we want, but you had that same situation that we saw in overtime against the Rams. Two tries for one yard, regardless of officials' uh, judgment, you don't get it. That's the bottom line. And that could have been an easy inflection point to fold, right? That could have been this moment where this team says, you know, they they just don't have it anymore. Yet, the response from the Seahawks after that moment, the defense steps up, gets a huge stop when they needed it to the most, and then with under three minutes to go, utilizing their timeouts and the two-minute warning, the Seahawks march down the field and find a way to get it. And, and, and what I loved about that drive, too, is that Geno Smith – has been on the the wrong side of a lot of criticism this year. And I have personally thought it was unwarranted. I look at Geno leading the league at many points this season in passing yards with an offensive line that is, with all due respect, patchwork, right? Uh, Great to have Abe Lucas back, by the way, in this game against the Niners. Yet they found a way to get it done, and it was Geno on that last drive with two huge scrambles, one to pick up a first down and keep the drive alive. The other, of course, the play that everybody will be talking about all week long, the game-winning touchdown, 12-yard scramble to win it, that was really special. So that's what I take away from this thing. It's one win, and that's what Geno's going to say. That's what Mike McDonald's going to say, and, and that's the outlook they should have. But we can look at it from the outside and say, okay, this is a team that's been struggling lately. This is a team that needed to win in the worst way, and you can look at it. I mean, the numbers are right there. The standings say it, okay? You win this game, and now it is a three-way tie for second place. Arizona's in first place at 6-4 and four in the NFC West. Then it's Seattle, San Fran, and the Rams all at 5-5. Five and five. And suddenly the Seahawks have put themselves in a position that everything's right in front of them. You play Arizona, that same first-place team, in two of the next three games, starting on the 24th, the next game, home at Lumen Field. That's a big one. Uh, we always knew it was going to be big, but now it's, it's really big, Okay. Then, two weeks after that, you play Arizona down in their stadium in Arizona. And then, uh, yeah, obviously there's some non-conference games for a, about a month. And then the season finale is 
lo and behold, against the Rams, which could have tiebreaker implications because, of course, L.A. came up here and won in Seattle just a couple weeks ago. So there's a lot of things that this one win sets the stage for. And that's what makes it so important because if you lose this game, okay, suddenly you're out by two games, right? And that's a huge uphill climb. I know we're talking about the difference between one game, but when you, you know, when you look at it in the abstract, that's what the situation is. Okay, so that's the on paper, the standings part of it. But again, I think it says a lot about this team. And that's the that's the way you feel good about this. If you felt, and I'm sure you did, a lot of 12s did, if you felt poorly after those Bills and Rams games with the utmost understanding as to why, right? You should feel equally excited about this one because it's the way they responded. We talk about the response after those that situation where they couldn't get one yard and two tries, right? Well, you look at that, and then you look at how they responded to losing all these games. And I think it says a lot about Mike McDonald. It says a lot about these guys. Listen, there's been a lot of turnover lately, right? You know, trading Jerome Baker, letting Tyrell Dotson go, Connor Williams retiring, okay? You're talking about shakeups that are happening because things aren't going right. So that's another aspect of the response that I think is really special from the Seahawks in this game. So that's really special in its own way. Now, you can look at this game and and whether or not it's a turning point for the entire season, we won't know until it leads potentially to something, right? I mean, if the Seahawks go out next week to Arizona and they fall, then it's like, okay, well, they they kept uh, hope alive for another week, and then you might be right back out of it. But if you say you win this, right, you beat you beat the Niners, then you beat Arizona, then you go to play the Jets, and suddenly something starts rolling here, something starts clicking here, you can look at this one game. You can look at that one final three-minute drive and say, okay, yeah, that was it. That was the that was the point. That was the turning point that the Seahawks figured things out. So that's why this one is so exciting. That's why we wanted to bring you this so-called emergency uh, rapid reaction show. Um, you know, and that's what I loved about Gino finding a way to win at the end. It was not his best game. He had the interception. Um, you know, it was a situation where he found himself in familiar position from years past with the Seahawks and. He even said right after the game, he loves having the ball in his hands when the game is on the line. And that's exactly what he did. And then, listen, that game-winning touchdown, again, we're talking about responses here, right? You talk about it in the big picture with this team in the wind. You can talk about it in in the smaller scale of things with those two tries for one yard. You can talk about it individually. Geno Smith, right? That was huge. To have maybe not his best game, a tough interception early that led to points, things of that sort. Um, And then go out and score the game-winning touchdown, yeah, that's what you want from a team. Uh, You prefer certainly the mistakes weren't there, but you want to see that character. You want to have that sort of responsive thing. And so that's why I think you can leave with some positivity from this game. Obviously, the euphoric excitement for beating the Niners for the first time in six tries, first time since 2021. But I think that there's more than just that to take from this game. Whether it leads to more wins, we're going to find out. But I think that's a really strong point to take away from this game. Responses, DK Metcalf missing the last two games, comes out with seven catches. Some of them were huge. In fact, he had a 29-yarder, the Hawks' largest play of the day, really. And that's the one that set up the Kenneth Walker touchdown to put the Hawks briefly anyway in front, 13-10 in the second half. If you don't get that, I mean, you don't, you're not even in this game, right? Because that was a third-down conversion, and... K-9 doesn't get the chance to punch it in because the drive's done right at that point. So that's what you have to look at. Okay, we can have this excitement and we can just be pumped about the win if you're a 12, but you got to peel back the layers. And that's why I'm more excited about this because the more you peel back, the more you see this is a resilient team, right? The more you see how strong they are, the more you see that they have, they've, they're pretty tough, man. Not just on the field as football players, but mentally tough. And... If you had any questions about that, understandably so with some of the mistakes we had seen in weeks past, you have to look at this now and say, okay, I like where this team's at. I like the potential moving forward. And I think that ultimately when, you know, it's all said and done, if the Seahawks can make a charge to either win the division, get in the playoffs, they probably need to win the division to make the playoffs just the way the NFC is stacking up. Should any of that occur, you look back at November 17th when they beat the Niners in Santa Clara and say, all right, yeah. That's when this team found themselves. It might have taken a bye week. Now, you know, granted, 
this is their only bye week of the year, but we kind of saw the so-called mini bye, and they bounced back, and they beat Atlanta the way they did. That was probably now the second most impressive win of the year. So something about these coaches and the uh, extra time off, they can figure some things out and make some things happen for this team. So, hey, it's one win. They're 5-5. Five and five. They're in a three-way tie for second in the NFC West. If you want to break down the tiebreakers, it's not quite that, but – Tiebreakers don't matter until January. So for right now, they're tied for second. Um, and you're not even in that position if you don't win this game. So big win. Um, a lot to take from it. Make sure you check back with us on the Como Sports End Zone. Later on this week, we're going to have the uh, breakdown of the Arizona Cardinals and our normal show that Najee will be here with me for, uh, where we're talking about all things heading into that matchup. But for here and now, one week, one really big win. Big responses, big plays, everything you could ask for in what might have been an ugly game otherwise, but everything you could ask for in a game that was pretty darn close to must win. Maybe not by definition and mathematically speaking, but it was a game the Hawks had to have. And no question about it, they got it. Okay, they got it. And it's a special win, no question about it. I hope you uh, keep checking out our videos here in the Como uh, Sports End Zone. It's on the Como News YouTube page. And of course, you can download the Como Sports End Zone podcast wherever you download your podcast. Big win for the Hawks. Hey, I can't wait to see everybody at Lumen Field. That's going to be a big one with the Cardinals. It'll be next Sunday, 125. Cannot wait. Uh, something about the 12s, I think they'll have that place rocking. But until then, we'll see you then. Huge win for the Seahawks.